I know uh, uh, even uh, on through several papers together with USA, uh, we have quantized many of these models. Okay, so quantize means constructing a quantum theory corresponding to a given classical theory. Right? Good. Now, if I could do that for gravity theory, I would be very happy. Then no problems at all. Then I would have a field theory describing everything at the classical level as well as that quantum level. Right? So, we have a minute. Yes. Yes. And then, now, what do we do about it? We are able to quantize these three, but not this one. Although we have a field theory for everything, okay, even for gravity theory, thanks to Mr. Einstein. Right? Good, very good. Now, we would like to know how the quantization scheme works for these three and why it doesn't work for this. Okay? That's our point of which we would try to know. Alright? So, uh, maybe if you allow me, I can make some space here. So, <coughs> now uh, what happens is that this is a transition amplitude for a process like electron electron going to electron electron or electron positron going to electron positron or electron photon going to electron photon like Compton scattering or Baba scattering or some of these things. You can calculate the transition amplitude for the process in the perturbation theory where these are some coefficients and lambda is the coupling constant and n is the order of interaction. This a n is the quantity which is determined by all the Feynman diagrams of a theory in that particular order. So, 0th order, 2nd order, 4th order. All orders one can prove in per covariant perturbation theory that all, all, all orders they would contribute 0. Okay? So, only the even orders. So, for example, you, you tell me an example, okay, this is electron-electron scattering via the exchange of a photon. Now, uh, before that, let me tell you that there are three different ways This is called as electron self energy or fermion self energy. This is called as photon self energy or vacuum polarization. This is called as vertex modification or vertex correction. These are the three fundamental processes or fundamental diagrams in quantum electrodynamic theory which are called as radiative corrections, radiative corrections and it is the, these radiative corrections that, that convert the non-interacting theories into the interacting theories, okay. So, with the help of these, you can construct higher order diagrams which would, which would 
make contributions to the transition and you do for any process. Yes. Isn't the first one the self energy? Yeah, actually, actually, I'm not uh, right now telling about their contribution. Uh, and if we at some point may not be in this semester, I don't know. But if we have time, I would be very happy to, to teach how to explicitly calculate them in quantum electrodynamics. Similarly, one can do it in other theories, like electroweak theories or strong theories. Okay. So, <coughs> actually, what happens is that. Uh, let us know the concept of a bare particle and a physical particle. Okay. So, just, let us just consider electron. Okay. So, electron would have some bare charge and bare mass. Let us just call it E0 and M0. Okay. Uh, E0 and M0. And E and M, or you can put some subscript for physical. So the these quantities, the bare quantities, they involve some infinities. Okay. So for example, if if here this is a this is a this is a diagram in QED theory. But it does not contribute anything. So it's a free process. Electron is going like that and it's emitting a photon. Okay. Or absorbing a photon. Or electron is going like this and emitting or absorbing a photon. Okay. Or E plus E minus are annihilating and giving a photon. Or a photon, you can interpret it in four different ways, or a photon it is splitting into a pair of electron and positron. Okay. But in for all the four possibilities, this would not give me any, if I would calculate here, this would give me zero. I can prove it. Okay. And uh, as you can see, the order of the diagram is one, because there is only one vertex. Okay. If I have two vertices, this would immediately be second order diagram. This is electron, electron going to electron, electron or electron, positron going to electron, positron and so on. Okay. And this, if you calculate here, is the lowest order diagram for this process. You see whether you plot it like this or like this or in any or like this. They are all the same because topologically you can make this like, like this or like this. So they can deform into each other. They are just the identical similar diagram. They, they just mean the same. Okay. And <coughs> now, uh, <coughs> so what happens is that a free electron, it is being surrounded by a cloud of uh, vacuum fluctuations. And this contribution of vacuum fluctuations is also infinite. And the uh, bare charge or bare mass is also infinite. But these do add up in a very sensible manner to give us some finite result. Okay, that's the beauty. And so, <coughs> for example, like this, if I would consider higher order diagram diagrams for this process, which would make sense. So here, it is these two diagrams, like this, or I have simply joined this here. So you simply join, this, join it here. So, making use of two of them, I can construct higher order diagrams. Okay. I have eight of these diagrams. Four can be interpreted here. Four can be interpreted here. As I said, electron propagating and emitting a photon, positron propagating like this, emitting or absorbing a photon, and so on. So, there are eight free vertices of in quantum electrodynamics. There are identically eight free vertices in quantum electrodynamics. Okay. Similarly, in all other theories, you can construct what is the number of three vertices. And from uh, now, making use of these, you can construct higher order diagrams and they would contribute uh, experimentally measurable things. You see, 
Why we do this? Because the first three interactions that we combine in the so-called relativistic field theory, which we also call as the standard model, it is the most accurate theory of nature that we have known so far. Okay, that's the reason we must try to understand the basics. We are not doing any great mathematical calculations, but we must know the, the, the main concepts behind it, right? Because this is the most accurate theory of nature and most of its predictions have been measured to experimental several digits very accurately. That all these experiments like CERN and DAISY and, and Fermilab and SLAG and so on and so forth, right? That all these labs we, who spend billions and billions of dollars or euros to, to investigate various aspects of these things. So, till date, this is the most theoretically most accepted and most accurate theory of nature and experimentally extremely well verified to several digits okay so now for example i take this so i have used this vacuum polarization or photon self energy to construct now the number of vertices here, 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 here. Now, so this is e to the power 4, this one e squared. Now I can, I can, I can here or so this is also e to the 